Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Now in today's episode, we're going to be trying out the PC World Windows 3.0 test drive. Now this right here is a very interesting demo version of Windows 3.0 that was made available to InfoWorld subscribers in 1990. And it was a very easy way to experience Windows 3.0 and get used to the user interface and the new features without actually buying it because this was made available for free. You just had to send in a response card in a particular issue of InfoWorld and you had to be lucky enough to do it within a 15 day window yes this was extremely limited from june 15th to june 30th 1990 so if you were like out of town when you got this issue mailed to you well tough luck unfortunately you missed out now the pc world name comes from the fact that it was printed next to a subscription offer for pc world but you didn't have to subscribe to that magazine to get in on this you just had to mail in that response card so we're going to pop in disk at number one here into the 98 pc's floppy disk drive and we're going to install all this and I'll show you the limitations of this version and how it differs from a full version of Windows 3.0 which uh, it does substantially so we're gonna run setup here now the setup process is extremely similar to the full version of Windows 3.0 though it does make some changes it mentions the PC world test drive specifically there is a phone number to call for product support we'll come back to that later on and it mentions that if you want to order the full Windows product the full version of Windows 3 you had to contact your local Windows dealer so we're going to press enter to continue it's going to ask us where we want to install it we'll go with the default directory and it'll begin copying files now instead of six diskettes that you had with windows 3.0 you've got two but it does include not only the demo program that is designed to take you through the new features and everything which is kind of the main purpose of this but it also includes a handful of applications from windows 3.0 and we'll get into that once we load into it so you see it uh, launches into the graphical portion of the setup much faster and it will ask us for disk 2 momentarily here and you can see one of those applications is windows solitaire yes we have solitaire in here which is a really nice addition i have to say really appreciate them including that in here and so now it asks us for windows 3.0 test drive disk number two so we'll pop out disk at number one and we'll put in disk at number two here and press enter <laughs> It's got to install those fonts and there we go you're done so we're gonna go ahead and return to dos here so we'll get out of that we will eject the diskette from the drive and now we're in the c windows directory so we're just going to type win to load in to windows 3.0 and there it is so you see by default it's got a different theme applied i guess to kind of distinguish it from the full version though you could obviously apply this theme in the full version of windows 3.0 just fine but it's a neat little uh, change that they made there more importantly though we only have four applications compared to the multitude of applications in the full version we've got test drive file manager control panel and solitaire now these three applications here are just copied over from windows 3.0 with a very important modification added that I'll touch on later on. But the application that is new and unique to this demo version of 3.0 is the test drive program right here. And this is kind of the main purpose of this entire thing. Yes, you can try out and experience the interface and use those three additional programs, but the main purpose of this is for you to launch this test drive program, go in here and go through this interactive tutorial and guide to learn how to use Windows 3.0 if you were thinking about buying it and seeing if it was something that you were interested in. So so we're going to go here and press the first option up here, which is click here to start. And it takes you to the main menu here. But this is actually just slide number one. If I use the arrow keys here, I can advance through and you see at the bottom left, we've got that diamond there that will uh, change the page number for us. But there are buttons that you can click to navigate around and jump to certain points in the interactive presentation here. If you click on the PC World Guide to Windows 3.0, it'll jump you to page number two, where you've got these two 
two other options here. But if you click on power tips, it'll jump you to page 27. And this is essentially a list of various power tips that would have been printed in PC World Magazine, but they're just consolidated here and uh, much easier for you to access. So if I wanna go to word processing, for example, and click on, let's see, professional right page jump. So I click on this and then it tells you what the tip is. Here's a quick way to jump to a page in professional right 2.0. Just press control J, enter the desired page number and press enter. And we can go back here and let's say we wanna to go to Windows 3.0 and let's do power tip number one browsing directories with file search and it gives you a description of that tip here windows 3.0's file manager has a handy search command that accepts dos wildcard file specs uh, fun fact the file explorer in windows 10 and windows 11 still behaves that way you can use dos wildcards which is uh, very very useful if you're searching for a particular file type so yeah it goes through and tells you about that and that's why the file manager was likely included in here so you could try this particular tip out and the various other tips that are going to pertain to File Explorer, or not File Explorer, File Manager in here. Now, if you want to go back to the main page, you click on this button right here. And well, that'll bring you to this hypermedia map rather, and you can click on main menu to go back to that page that we were on. And we're going to click on the guide to Windows 3.0. And let's click on what is Windows 3.0? That's a question I've always asked myself. What is Windows 3.0? Well, it's a kind of super shell, a powerful and easy to use graphical user interface that runs on top of DOS and turns your computer into a highly efficient business tool, which is a really fancy way of saying it's an operating environment that runs on top of DOS, but hey, it's still an accurate definition in my book. And then you've got some more buttons down here and you can also go back to the 3.0 power tips. Well, let's click on system requirements and benefits. Ooh, okay. So you got some nice graphics here, selecting a display. Uh, by the way, there was both a VGA version of this test drive and an EGA version. So we're obviously using the VGA version here, but if you had an EGA monitor, you could use the, well, the EGA version. But this flowchart view is extremely useful at jumping to a specific point in this interactive presentation. So if all you wanted to do was go to the tool section and view information about these various tools that come included with Windows 3.0, you can do that. So I can click on paintbrush here. It'll give me a brief description of it and how I can use it, what it does. I can go back and click on other accessories and view some other accessories that come with Windows 3.0, though I can't click on these to get a more uh, detailed description of it. But I mean, for most of these, they're, they're extremely self-explanatory. A calculator is a calculator, standard or scientific. A clock, you know, it can be shrunk. Uh, you can do that, shrink the window size, all that good stuff. But uh, yeah, you know, it's a really nice little presentation, actually a very detailed presentation, I should say, that walks you through how to use Windows 3.0 and what you would need to run it. So when you're done, you would click on exit to program manager here, and it'll say, do you really wanna quit? We'll say, okay, and it'll say, okay, thanks for using. And then before it quits, it jumps you to this Windows basic screen here, which is extremely useful because you're about to exit and go back into program manager. So if you didn't know how to navigate within program manager, this gives you a little like guide on how to do that, uh, how you can close windows, how you can maximize and uh, shrink windows, how you can scroll through windows, how you can change the border size, all that good stuff. So we're going to click on OK, and now we're back here at the program manager. Now, these three programs, like I said, they are just essentially copied over from the full version of Windows 3.0. So I got file manager here. I can go in here. I can go to the A drive if I want to. You know, it's not going to read anything in it because there's nothing in the A drive, but you know, you get the point. I can browse into my Windows folder. I can view all the, the files on here if I want to launch something directly from here. Uh, now there are, I mean, those four programs that we have in the program group are not technically the only programs on here. You've got things like Winver. I can open up Winver here. Let's see what else we got. We've got, of course, Task Manager. You're going to definitely want that in here. Of course, Solitaire. You got the setup executable, of course, program manager you definitely need that uh, this right here is the tutorial application so I can launch it here it's the same thing we just went through and of course control panel so we can go in here and change the theme if we want to so let's go to color here and so it's set to the Arizona color scheme okay so that is a, uh, a an actual color scheme in Windows 3.0 so we can change it to Windows default if we want to and there we go so that's looking more like default 
uh, Windows 3.0. But you know, I do like that Arizona color scheme. Let's change it to, uh, let's see, ooh, let's go with fluorescent. Yeah, that's what we want right there. Actually, we're gonna kind of, <laughs> we're gonna really uh, screw this up here. I mean, come on, we have to, I mean, when you <laughs> when you have the opportunity to mess with the Windows color scheme, you're gonna mess it up. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just an unspoken rule, especially for this channel. So let's go to the color palette here. Let's make the window background here the application workspace let's make that a nice neon green let's make the menu bar a nice uh let's go with uh let's go with red there let's make the active title bar oh gosh what do we want to do let's do this like checkered pattern here inactive we'll make that uh pink and we'll make the window background yellow and the window text white beautiful so we'll save that and uh oh yeah this is looking wonderful uh Actually, I mean, not, I can't believe I'm going to say this, not half bad. I mean, uh, yeah, it's not a, I mean, if you change uh, the the background, the program manager window background here, or the, the application workspace to something else, and you get rid of the red title bar, I think that looks pretty good. That looks pretty, pretty nice. And of course, last but not least, we have Solitaire, which is a very important addition, actually, because the main purpose of Solitaire, this version of Solitaire here, was to teach people how to use the mouse, how to get accustomed to using the mouse in a fun and interactive way. And uh, it definitely accomplished that because, well, people spent a lot of time playing solitaire when you had downtime at the office and that sort of thing. So uh, yeah, we'll close out of that. Now I'm sure you guys are wondering, okay, so you say it is limited to running these four applications. What happens when you try to run another Windows program? Like if you went out and bought Microsoft Office or everybody's favorite RAM doubling software, SoftRAM95, and you tried to uh, put it into your floppy diskette drive and run the setup file from it, what's gonna happen? Well, it's not gonna work and let me show you. So I've got the SoftRAM totally legit program installation diskette here. We're gonna put it in, we'll go to the A drive and we'll run setup.exe. What happens? Well, it's going to say, and you can barely make it out there because of the way I've got the theme configured, the application you're trying to run is a full-featured application. This demonstration version of Windows runs only demonstration applications. To run your application, see your Windows dealer to purchase the full version of Windows. This is because this version of Windows has been modified to where whenever you try to run an application, it checks for a demo app string in the application header. And that needs to be there for the application to properly execute. If it's not there, you'll get that error message. So all of these applications here have that modification, so it allows them to run, even though they are essentially the same program. This is not a demo version of Solitaire, it's full-fledged Solitaire, just with that modification made to where it will allow the demo version of Windows to run it. Now it is certainly possible to make this modification yourself and add this string to an executables application header. But that is something that an average computer user from 1990 is not going to possess both the tools and the know-how to do it. So this limitation worked really well and prevented people from just using this as a free copy of Windows 3.0. But for what it is, it's a really cool little demo of Windows 3.0 and it does exactly what you would want a demo program to do. There's one more thing though that I have to do before we head out of here and that is we got to call this phone number. I just have to do this because uh, one of the things that inspired me to make this video was a tweet that I saw from Windows on Windows which is a channel I've been following for years and uh, he posted a, a little blurb about this and talked about what it was and PC World actually quote tweeted his tweet and said, don't call the phone number. So you know what we're gonna do? We're gonna call the phone number. So let me pull up uh, my phone here. I highly doubt, I mean, I don't know, maybe this is still a PC World phone number. Maybe they still own this, or maybe this is gonna call some random guy and he's gonna be like, what on earth, uh, what on earth are you doing? So, okay, 415-978-3384, let's call. The number you have dialed is unedited. <laughs> the number you have dialed is, united is that what he said hang on i think that was like a cut there let's go uh let's let's try that again 
Okay, so it cut off there at the beginning, but uh, I made that out. It said the number you've dialed is unallocated. Okay, so yeah, mystery solved. It's not uh, it's not a valid phone number anymore. It's unallocated, as that uh, very interesting recording that I've not heard before uh, said. So yeah, one other thing that's worth mentioning is this demo version of Windows 3.0 was not the only demo version of Windows 3.0. There's at least one other version that I know of, and that is the Microsoft Excel demo. But it ran under a Windows 3.0 shell because, well, to run that version of Excel, it had to run under Windows. So that's how uh, Microsoft did it. And this was also a PC world thing. It was much newer, though. It was distributed on three and a half inch diskettes as opposed to five and a quarter inch diskettes like this version was here. I know these aren't five and a quarter inch diskettes, but I just copy them over to the three and a half inch diskettes. Uh, so because I don't have a five and a quarter inch drive on this computer here. But uh, yeah, so it, it essentially accomplished the same thing just with Excel. It allowed you to try it out and it walked you through how to do various things with it. But it was more limited than this version here because you didn't have these three additional programs. Programs. And it also had that same application limitation, so you could not run any application that did not have that demo app string in the application header. It would give you that same exact error message. So I think this is pretty cool, guys. I think it would have been really neat to try this out back in 1990. And hey, if any of you guys actually did that, if you were an InfoWorld subscriber and mailed in that card and actually got a copy of this, be sure to let us know down in the comments what your experience was like. But that's pretty much going to wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up be sure to get subscribed down below turn on notifications all that good stuff and as always i want to thank you all so much for watching and i will see you in the next video